Okay, I think we're going to get started now. Thank you for joining us this morning and Happy New Year to you all. This is our first webinar in 2020, so I can still say Happy New Year. Welcome to today's webinar on managing vaccines with other health commodities. I'm Barbara Lamphere. Most of you who have already been participating in this webinar series know me by now. I'm a senior technical advisor with JSI who has worked in health supply chain management for many years. Most of those in building the capacity of public sector organizations to manage health commodities in a variety of programs in Asia, Africa, and the Middle East. I'm very pleased to be with you today and to welcome our special guest and immunization expert, Hanuk Halamarian, Vaccine Program Manager for JSI in Ethiopia. Later in the webinar, Hanuk will be sharing Ethiopia's experience in integrating vaccines into the integrated pharmaceutical logistics system. Hanuk, please take a few minutes to introduce yourself to, to our attendees. Uh, thanks, uh, Barbara. Uh, I am Henok. I am a vaccine program manager at uh, GSI Ethiopia. I have more than nine years experience in immunization supply chain system strengthening, and I provide technical advice to Minister of Health Ethiopia on immunization supply chain system design, uh, data for decision making, cold chain equipment and temperature monitoring device, as well as immunization supply chain leadership and capacity building. Before I joined the JSI, I was working with ICRC and uh, MSA for Dr. Without Border as a medical logistician for uh, six years. Thank you, Barbara. Oh, welcome, Hunuk. We're glad to have you today. Today's webinar is the fifth in the Immunization Supply Chain Leadership webinar series. We want to welcome those who are joining us for the first time and thank all of you for investing your time to learn more about supply chain leadership. Let's briefly review the objectives of the webinar. So today we will explain the benefits of and the key considerations for integrating the management of vaccines and other medicines and health commodities. We will also describe the use of supply chain segmentation as a strategy to optimize management of vaccines with other health commodities. We will identify factors that can contribute to successful integration of vaccines into the general health commodity supply chain. And we will, of course, also be having a wonderful example of the Ethiopia situation of integrating vaccines into their supply chain. I want to remind you, as we have in our other webinars, that we will have time at the end of the presentation to address some of your questions. And if you have any questions, please use the Q&A function that's at the bottom of your screen. We will look for your questions there in the Q&A section and not in the chat function. So let's get started on today's webinar topic. We're going to start with a bit of background on the integration of immunization services with other health programs, as this sets the stage for talking about integration of vaccines and other commodities in the supply chain. As far back as 2005, the immunization community, WHO and UNICEF, realized the benefits of integrating immunization services and other primary health care services. The strength of vaccine programs could benefit other child health and antenatal programs and vice versa. As seen as these excerpts from three important policy documents, integration of immunization services with other health service is and has been a priority. And we can see why. Immunization services and other primary health care services have multi multiple interactions with the same target groups mothers and children. Services such as family planning or vitamin A or other nutritional supplementation, administration of antiparasitic medicine, distribution of bed nets, growth monitoring and health education complement immunization services and can be provided during the same facility visits. 
Through integration of services, programs can prevent duplication of health worker activities and therefore reduce costs. Integration of services also benefits families, reducing the number of visits to health centers and reducing family transportation costs and potentially less time spent on health center visits. More recent WHO and UNICEF policies focus on integration of vaccines with other health commodities with potential benefits in efficiency, effectiveness, and sustainability for the immunization program and other health programs. We will talk more about these benefits in a few minutes. But let's first define what we mean by integration. In this webinar, when we talk about integration, we are talking about product integration, the management of products from multiple vertical programs in one supply chain. Manuk, is this your understanding of product integration as well? Uh, yes, Barbara. Uh, historically, vertical programs such as uh, National Family Planning, Malaria Program, HIVs, EPI, and other programs may each have had their own separate supply chains with separate storage, separate transportation and information systems. And while program managers may feel that they have more control of their products and information with separate supply chain, most products from these programs will be distributed to the same service delivery points and may many of the same clients or patients. Yes, and we can see that having multiple vertical supply chains can mean duplication of efforts, more complexity and higher costs considering that warehousing, transportation, and other aspects of logistics are needed for each supply chain. You lose the economy of scale with multiple supply chains with higher costs and less efficiency. When we manage products from multiple vertical programs in one supply chain, the products associated with multiple programs are oftentimes stored together, ordered and resupplied using the same requisition forms, and distributed together through the levels of the pipeline to the service delivery points. However, when deciding to manage vaccines with other health products, it's not necessarily an all or nothing proposition. Integration may take many forms with some logistic activities integrated while others remain program specific. For example, in many cases, the EPI program will decide to quantify for their product needs independently from the quantification for other program products or essential medicines, while storage and distribution of products is integrated. An example of a single aspect of integration is including oxytocin in the cold chain storage at the facility level. In 2015, WHO made an official statement to approve this, and this is now being done in many places. We have seen some creative ways of making this work. For example, using separate colored plastic containers for oxytocin to distinguish it from vaccines in cold storage. It is important in any case of integration that the procedures are formalized and documented in SOPs. While it may be easier to integrate storage of vaccines with other health products, it may be more difficult to integrate procurement activities. Procurement of vaccines is often outsourced to agencies such as UNICEF rather than managed by the Ministry Procurement Unit. However, as many programs now use electronic logistics management information systems, logistics management information systems can be more easily integrated to serve the needs of multiple programs, which can be helpful for coordination across programs in a health system. So let's do a quick poll to learn about the program you work with and whether vaccines are managed with other products and what aspects are integrated. So I'm gonna launch a poll here. 
and you'll see that there are two questions. And I'd like to get your um, get some information about what you all are doing in your programs. So the first questions are: Are vaccines managed through a separate supply chain in your program, or are some or all vac aspects of vaccine managed and integrated with other health commodities? So is it separate or is it integrated? So please go ahead and answer that question in the poll. And then the second part of the question is, if, you, if your system is integrated, what aspects of the supply chain for vaccines are integrated? And then you can choose any of the options in there, which are quantification, procurement, storage, distribution, LMIS. So please go ahead and, and answer our poll. I'll give you a few minutes. All right. Just a few more seconds here. Let's see what what our what this looks like amongst our attendees. Okay, I'm going to end the polling now and I'm going to share the results. Um, and I think you'll see here that it looks like about two thirds of, of the programs with which you work are, are still our separate vaccine supply chain. And about a third of the programs are integrated with other health commodities in some way. So we see here that the majority of the integration when we look at question number two is in storage and LMIS, two of the ones that I mentioned that are, that are easier to, um, to integrate. Um, and we'll talk a, a little bit more about these aspects and we'll see some of the examples in, the, in Ethiopia about what, they, what parts are, are integrated in some of the effects. Thank you for joining this poll. I'm going to stop sharing the results and we'll move on. Okay, we have already mentioned a few of the potential benefits of managing vaccine with other health commodities, but let us take some time now to summarize this and look at some consideration for integration. Uh, one of the biggest benefit is the cost saving in those areas that require a large investment in infrastructure, such as storage and transportation or development of information system. While vertical programs may have already made these investments, integration should be considered to reduce current costs or when investing in infrastructure improvement, such as moving from paper-based logistic management information system to electronic LMIS. Some of the benefits come from the streamlining product management procedures. For example, integrating the management of products across multiple programs and <coughs> instituting a common set of inventory management, ordering, and resupply procedures simplifies the training of health workers and their work process. Related to stock management, the regress procedures used for the management of vaccines and similar products may also have the positive effect of limiting wastage of other products due to damage, expiry, or theft. As with inventory management procedures, having, this, having one LMIS for multiple programs and integrating the vaccine information system with the integrated logistic management information system can make the data collection reporting procedure more efficient with fewer people involved. And one process to learn. In addition, Having one LMIS accessible to policymakers and managers can help coordination across health programs, particularly for areas such as planning and budgeting. Barbara, how are some considerations when managing vaccine with other health commodities? Well, when determining if you should manage vaccines with other health 
commodities, you should really consider what objectives you're trying to achieve in improving the management of the vaccine supply chain and whether integration with other health products will contribute to that, the objectives you want to achieve. If you're trying to increase efficiency or reduce costs or make the best use of your resources, ask yourself if managing vaccines with other health commodities will help you achieve, achieve those objectives and plan to use indicators to help you measure if you, have, if you have indeed achieved those objectives. And not all supply chain activities may be appropriate for integration with other health commodities as, as we noted before and should remain separate. For example, the data used for forecasting vaccine requirements relies heavily on demographics and targets, while consumption data is often the best data source for, for forecasting for other health products. These simple differences would make it more difficult to integrate, say, forecasting of vaccines with essential medicines. In many ways, integration can streamline the supply chain tasks of health workers, especially at the lower levels of the supply chain. But consideration needs to be taken in preparing staff at the lower levels who may now be managing a larger number of diverse products, some of which they may not have previously managed. So the consideration is not only for training that those health staff say to, to manage uh, vaccines um, in addition to the other products, but also for the ongoing, their ongoing support and supervision in doing so. Now I can anticipate some comments here, someone saying, but how can you integrate the management of vaccines with other health commodities when vaccines have such storage different storage requirements and require cold chain throughout the pipeline. So I, I'm sure there's some, going to be some questions about this. Hanuk? Uh, yeah. Uh, yes, the vaccine has peculiar characteristic and we are not uh, storing a vaccine with non keep cool items. In our experience, we are uh, uh, storing vaccine with other keep cool item, for instance, oxytocin. So uh, this is one of our, our experience. And uh, from level to level also, it's, uh, there are some differences. For instance, in central level or in higher level at uh, district level, we can store with other keep cool items, for instance, with oxytocin, with uh, uh, also with some uh, antiretroviral uh, uh, reagents, laboratory agents uh, as well as insulin can store. Uh, but when we are going to uh, health facility level, some of health facilities are also storing because uh, they have only one refrigerator. So, uh, so when we are talking about integration, we are talking about uh, integration of vaccine with keep cool items, not with other and then keep cool item products. Okay. Thank you. Yeah. All right, so WHO and UNICEF even put out a joint statement encouraging the greater health supply chain convergence for temperature sensitive pharmaceuticals where appropriate. Now to see how integration can be done, we're going to discuss strategies to optimize vaccine management within an integrated supply chain, specifically the strategy of segmentation. Public health programs handle a large variety of products with many characteristics going to a diverse group of clients through many different kinds of facilities. Procuring, storing, or delivering all these products in the exact same way does not always make sense and will not achieve 100% availability. Segmentation can help. Let's define segmentation. Segmentation is the process of analyzing data on customers' needs and product characteristics to determine which segments or groupings of products make the most sense to procure, store, and, or deliver together. This process is used extensively in the commercial sector and now the public sector to identify groups of products that, have, that are appropriate for integration to manage together. When you determine which logistics functions to combine, you need to consider and make trade-offs between the handling requirements of particular products, the cost of the functions, and customer service. 
segmentation analysis, when you start this process, looks at facility characteristics and product characteristics. And we're going to look at a diagram to illustrate some of this. Um, it's a little small, I'm sorry for that, but I hope you can, can see this on your screens. So one supply chain may have several segments depending on the characteristics of the products managed in the supply chain or the needs of the customers served by the supply chain. So at the top of this diagram, you will see some of the characteristics of possible supply chain segments. The product segment may be defined by the characteristics of the health facilities receiving the products. For example, there may be a seasonal variability of products used by facilities or differences in timing and resupply. Those characteristics may be used to define a segment. Product characteristics that may also help define a supply chain segment are those such as short shelf life or cold chain requirements. So you may handle all of your short shelf life products together in one segment. Products which are destined for, the, for health facilities with the same characteristics or which themselves have similar characteristics may be managed together in a segment, even if they are products for very different health programs. So you may have short shelf life products, say for laboratory products and for certain antiretrovirals or certain other products that are, that are managed together. And obviously for vaccines, we have cold chain as a possible segmentation. For example, as noted earlier, you, may, you might group vaccines with other cold chain items, such as oxytocin, a maternal health product used for the treatment of postpartum hemorrhage and some other specific antibiotics. These products in that segment might be stored and, and transported together. The procedures for this specific cold chain segment would likely be different than those for the other products. For example, distribution may be direct from central facility, from central level to facility, and possibly on a different resupply frequency than other products, and with a probably a, a different maximum and minimum stock level in, uh, parameters. An example from Zambia, there the Ministry of Health has segmented its lab products as part of its national logistics system design, cre creating different resupply procedures for fast and slow moving reagents and different shipping methods for short shelf life controls. Examples of segmentation. If you were to undergo a, a segmentation as a, as, strat as a strategy for managing vaccines with other health commodities, you will need to be sure to think about the following steps. Moving to an integrated system, as well as using the strategy of segmentation will mean a change in current processes and procedures. And it is important to assure that EPI managers are in agreement with the plan and clearly understand the benefits and possible trade-offs of using segmentation. Begin the process of segmentation with defining the segment or segments you're going to be designing for your supply chain. Taking into consideration the needs of the health program and the people served. The next step is to develop specific performance indicators for each segment so you can assess the success of the segmentation strategy. Indicators would include things such as stock status, cost, and lead times. And then to, to achieve the desired performance, you need to develop standard operating procedures for the specific, each specific segment to be used by supply chain managers who are working in, with those products in that segment. Once the segment has been designed and implementation can get underway based on an implementation plan that includes the scale up and use of the new supply chain procedures for the segment. This will include training staff in the new procedures for the segmented products. And to oversee the performance of the segmentation and the segmented supply chain, 
and to ensure coordination across the supply chain, the coordination between its partners and those responsible for funding supply chain activities, it's very important to set up a methodology, a forum for, or a committee to meet regularly to review the indicators that you've set for, for success and to take action as needed to ensure a continuous availability of vaccines and other products. Uh, we're now going to um, that, dive into our Ethiopia example, and I'm very excited now to ask Honok to share this with us. Um, please, Honok, explain, give us some uh, background and history and some of the exciting results from the Ethiopia um, integration of the vaccine program into the supply chain. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Barbara. Uh, yeah, a legacy system uh, followed administrative levels which leads to having uh, too many levels, loss of availability, efficiency, inefficiency, etc. It was uh, described in assessment as it is a chaotic. There was a little investment. Why <clears throat> there was a little investment? Because it was not decided whether it is moved to the down level or not. It was run by also Ministry of Health and Regional Health Bureaus by staff who had no real experience of supply chain expertise. Also staff rotated regularly, so had little chance to develop expertise. At the same time, we had other supply chain for essential medicines, HIV, malaria, health, <clears throat> family planning, and maternal health also was separately managed. Starting in 2005, this system was significantly redeveloped, including a master plan and a single federal agency to manage all commodities. Significant investment in infrastructure system, including automation and people. Yeah, what are the rationales for vaccine supply chain integration in Ethiopia? One of the rationale is visibility. It, was, it is easier for Ethiopian pharmaceutical supply agency or a medical store to eliminate levels to enhance data visibility as a federal agency. The other rationale is accountability. Single agency responsible, the vaccine supply chain, that will lead improved accountability for system performance. The third rationale is sustainability. Leveraging Ethiopian pharmaceutical supply agency infrastructure, system, technology, human capacity, and it will lead to increased supply chain sustainability, sustainability and performance. Uh, the last rationale is efficiency. New expensive large volume vaccines being introduced. For instance, Rota in 2013, PCV in 2012, also HPV is coming and other vaccine also included in Ethiopian system. That means a new approach needed and reluctance to invest in the current system without change. So based on this, we developed vaccine transition plan or vaccine integration plan. We develop this plan then for such a complex effort and in a bid to not disrupt too much with the current system, it was decided to adopt a phase-based approach, starting in three halves out of 19 halves. So this was our pilot site when we started. Initial priorities including, when we start, transferring existing cold rooms and other equipment to Ethiopian Pharmaceutical Supply Agency from Ministry of Health structures and from district structure. Then automation follow, designed and implement ELMIS. Then develop and roll out of standard operation procedure. We develop SOPs for all activities. Then let us see one by one the five fundamentals of supply chain transformation or integration which we followed when we integrate facts into other commodities. We start, <coughs> it is, uh, the five fundamentals are supply chain leadership, continuous improvement plan, supply chain data for management, 
cold chain equipment and supply chain redesign. So these are the five fundamentals and we develop our strategies based on these fundamentals. Well, Hudnuk, that sounds like a great way to frame the work in Ethiopia. Let's start with supply chain leadership. Yeah, in supply chain leadership, high level championing of supply chain improvement beginning with Dr. Dr. Kiros, he's the current WHO general director, and transforming down to today to the current Minister of Health of Ethiopia. And evolution in the role of Federal Minister of Health from operational to stewardship role. Ethiopian Pharmaceutical Supply Agency is responsible for day-to-day -day management of supply chain. And Federal Minister of Health, Regional Health Bureaus, where the health offices focused on policy, planning, and service delivery, and holding Pharmaceutical Supply Agency accountable for vaccine availability. Active coordination group among all partners, for instance, UNICEF, WHO, JSI, CHAI, and the leading partners or the leaders, uh, Minister of Health and Ethiopian Pharmaceutical Supply Agencies are responsible for planning and implementation of uh, transformation. So um, <clears throat> during this time, what challenges did you face and what lessons did you learn from it? Yeah, uh, one of the challenge was when we start in the piloting approach, two out of three hubs were in one of in the regional bureau leadership was active transformation or integration process. They, they are doing well, but one of the regional health bureau was far less involved. It stuck. It is also stuck. So they are not moving fast, uh, and also they don't want to. Uh, gives activity to Ethiopian Pharmaceutical Supply Agency. So this was one of the challenge. Mm -hmm. So what about continuous improvement and planning? Uh, yeah, the second uh, pillar was continuous improvement planning. And EVMA was carried out in 2013 prior to transformation. And most recently also we did in, in mid-2019. Uh, so identified priorities area of transformation is of one of the activities and also strategic planning was done. We had a five-year strategic uh, plan uh, and operation plan after uh, lack of sufficient detail. Uh, here also we had the challenges. One of the challenges, a lack of regress monitoring process was a challenge and all agreed improvements have been made but identifying and quantifying them have been a difficulty. So tell us about Ethiopia's experience in supply chain data for management integration. It's an important aspect. Uh, yeah, LMIS integration is also one of our success area. We adopted existing Ethiopian pharmaceutical supply agency LMIS by adding vaccine specific features like VVM and we deployed the system to existing cold rooms to provide quick, quick visibility. Also, we have mobile-based system, which is called uh, Embrana. So Embrana is a mobile-based system, which has proved to be success and has now been deployed in all 800 districts. And also, we, we also have dashboards providing live data and create items at hubs to strengthen data use. We have uh, impact team reviewing EPI supply chain data monthly uh, together with also other supply chain data. It increased data use teams also created at each hub for structured data review and use. So this is one of our success in data uh, for management. Uh, the challenge was adopt forecasting, which is still largely based on coverage in population data to incorporate into logistics data because vaccine follows the uh, population data. So this is one of the challenge. Uh, also for data for decision making, these are uh, the screenshot of uh, live vaccine program dashboard and showing stock levels are central and hub. 
also district or where else data is also available. This is some of the example of the screenshot of the, our dashboard. So Hanuk, I know there have been many changes in relation to cold chain equipment management. So can you give us some of the details? Uh, yeah, uh, in terms of cold chain equipment, there are three big investments after vaccine supply chain uh, transition or integration to Ethiopian Pharmaceutical Supply Agency. Uh, one of the big investment is new cold rooms at HAP or regional level uh, was procured. Two working cold rooms uh, per uh, hub, and we have around the 19 hubs. So uh, we uh, also installed uh, this cold room. Also, we installed six big cold rooms in this, at the central level. Now we don't have any space issue. Also, we are uh, storing vaccine with other commodities at the central level and also at the hub. Uh, the other is we deployed SDD refrigerators at the health post level. By mid-2018, 64% of our health centers, it's around 2,500, uh, are uh, installed with SDDs, and around 25% of the health posts, around 4,000 health posts are also equipped with uh, SDD refrigerators. Uh, also, we procured refrigerator vehicles to deliver vaccine to the hub. At the center of the level, we have big, uh, three big uh, trucks, uh, refrigerator trucks, and at the hub level, uh, all have, they have uh, their own uh, refrigerator truck. So these are the main investment decisions. Mm -hmm. It's quite a, quite a large investment. Um, I know that supply chain redesign is the fifth of Gavi's five fundamentals of supply chain transformation. What has been done so far with the redesign and what are the future priorities? Yeah, this one is uh, the bigger achievement also eliminating level to increase velocity, visibility and efficiency. Uh, uh, initially eliminate zones because there was also a zone, so zones was eliminated. So through direct delivery to districts and with delivery to facilities is uh, will also follow. Uh, also, we did a route optimization using Lamasoft to develop a detailed room map. Uh, the other one, the supply chain also redesign was supply chain costing for, advocate, for advocacy and resource mobilization also was done and development of detailed SOPs was also uh, part of system design. Our future priorities will be direct delivery to health facilities. This is one of our uh, future priority that we already started and we are delivering vaccine to nearly to 800 health facilities. So, so this is also one of an achievement. Uh, so we have around 4,000 health facilities in 300 uh, hospitals. So we, we, this is one of our uh, uh, priority. Also in long term, uh, assess feasibility of integration delivery using what so-called the boxes because uh, one refrigerator truck per hub is not sufficient to deliver vaccine to health facilities. Mm -hmm. So we are thinking to deliver vaccine uh, by using the boxes and by integrating with other uh, supplies. Okay. So why don't you please share with us some of the major results of, of your transformation here? Uh, yeah, uh, the major result uh, achieved uh, quantitatively is real, uh, one of it is real-time data visibility. But previously, we don't have any visibility for uh, vaccine. So now we have visibility at three level. Uh, at central level, we have data visibility and also at hubs, as well as at the district level, we have data visibility, real data visibility. And also number of supply chain decreased from five to four. This is one of the big achievements we made. Uh, and also e-ordering at hub and at district level, they are ordering electronically. The other one is direct distribution, center to hub, the direct distribution was started and now all hubs are received receive directly from center and also hub are directly distri distributed or delivered vaccine to all districts. These are the major uh, results. Also cold storage capacity increases significantly at all level. Now we don't have any uh, at the 
center half and districts we don't have any space issue. Uh, the other one is district level inventory visibility increased from zero to 95 percent because we have around 800 waradas. So from 800 waradas we have vaccine visibility at 763 waradas. So these are some of the results. That's a particularly impressive um, result, that vis inventory visibility. I know it's a concern for many people. I'm sure um, we will all like to hear some of the lessons that you've learned and what your plans are for the future. Uh, yeah, but uh, let me reflect uh, the previous system. Just to summarize, the previous system was a long term. It, uh, it is a long level. It is around five levels. And now it is four level. So for the future, our plan is delivering to health facilities. So our system, and our levels will be cut to three level. Uh, these are uh, the future plan. Mm -hmm. And what have, we, what have been some of the lessons learned in this transformation and integration? Yeah. Yes, uh, from uh, this integration or transformation, uh, we learned a lot of lessons. So some of the less learned are, we can't have enough political buy-in, high level ministerial support, regional uh, support, also sometimes it is lack of. Uh, also don't un underestimate the human challenges when you are removing or cutting the system, people are nervous, they feel that jobs going away, new roles, new responsibilities. So to create a Hello? Okay, I am not longer hearing Hanuk. Hanuk? Excuse us for a moment. Well, I think, um, I hope Anuk will be able to join us again here. Um, okay, well, maybe I will continue on and we will um, see we can, and if he rejoins us again, I will, um, we can ask him about his future priorities. Let's summarize. Uh, some of the factors for successful integration of supply chain for vaccines with other health commodities. As we have discussed already, and in addition to some of the lessons learned from Ethiopia that Hanuk shared, that are, there are several factors we should take into consideration when integrating. Mm -hmm. Now, now it's come because the internet is very... <laughs> okay, sorry. Um, let's uh, no go problem. back here. I'm, Apologies to everyone, and we'll start, we'll go back where we were, because Hanuk was just telling us some of his lessons learned, and I was beginning to summarize some of them. So let's hear the rest, okay? Okay, yeah, so you can please go ahead. No for problem. The yeah. Yeah, we because, all understand. <laughs> yeah, because the internet was, <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah, these are some of the lessons learned. Uh, and the, our future priorities will be currently bring direct delivery to its facilities and planning testing integration delivery as part of integrated pharmaceutical logistics system using cold boxes will be one of our priorities also need to bring visibility to facility level using automation because our final target is in the twin visibility so this is one of our priority for the future also cold chain maintenance continuous it is one of the challenge so we will work also in cold chain maintenance these are some of uh, our priorities okay great thank you Hanuk. thank you for that wonderful description of case of ethiopia so we're summarizing um, some of the factors for successful integration of the supply chain for vaccines with other health commodities um, there are several factors that we want to take into consideration when we do this and i think Hanuk has has um, mentioned some of them. It is important, as I mentioned before, that we define your objectives of integration. Are you considering integration to make the supply chain <clears throat> for vaccines more cost-effective or more efficient to optimize the use of your infrastructure and financial and human resources? Clearing, clearly knowing what you want to achieve will help in determining if integration will help you achieve the objectives. 
what aspects of the supply chain to integrate in, and if segmentation should be considered. As noted before, it is important that all stakeholders involved agree on the vaccine supply chain objectives and how integration will help achieve these objectives. This is that all important political buy-in Hanuk mentioned. Disagreement can lead to delays in moving forward. All stakeholders should be involved in setting the performance indicators and targets and in supporting this change in vaccine management. It may take a champion to lead the cause, but certainly it will require coordinated leadership and careful management of the change process. And as I've mentioned before, any change in the supply chain processes will include preparing staff to under, undertake these new processes. News, with integration, with the addition of vaccines with other health commodities, staff who had previously not had any responsibility for vaccine management may be now charged with doing so, and they'll have to learn those aspects, such as vaccine biomonitoring and cold chain that will be made unique to some of the va to vaccines. And depending on the form integration takes, it will be important to ensure that funding for the management of vaccines is secured. If vaccines which were previously managed by the EPI program are now managed by central medical stores as a logistics agency, or what other agency you might use for, for the management, then service level agreements should be in place that specify the costs and payment for services, as well as the level of performance expected from that logistics provider. So you need to have those formal uh, uh, agreements in place and secure funding. In addition, more stakeholders may now be involved in overseeing the supply of vaccines that are managed in the integrated supply chain. At least the EPI program will want to coordinate with any logistics providers, such as the central medical stores or others involved in the storage or management and the management of information. So to coordinate and communicate about the supply of vaccines and any of the health commodities in an integrated system, mechanisms should be in place to facilitate the sharing of information. This is the end of the webinar. Um, today we have explained the benefits of and key considerations for integrating the management of vaccines with other medicines and health commodities. We described the use of supply chain segmentation as a strategy to optimize the management of vaccines with other health commodities. And we've identified factors that can contribute to successful integration of vaccines into the general health commodity supply chain. And we have seen how these concepts have been applied in the case of the integration of vaccines in the Ethiopia supply chain. So now we have a few minutes to answer and address some of the questions that, that have come in. We have three questions so far, and I will um, read these aloud and then we'll see um, how we can best answer answer them. First question, is there any best practice of any integrated supply chain sy system that works? How does the system address pushbacks from some government stakeholders that benefit from the parallel supply chain system? Well, I think we've seen in, in Ethiopia, which uh, has undergone this integration supply chain, that it's, it's working pretty well. Um, Anouk, do you want to say anything about um, Ethiopia as the best practice of an integrated supply chain or um, uh, yeah. handled is, yeah. any pushback yeah. from government? <laughs> yeah, because yeah, uh, everybody agreed here also that it is one of the best the practice because previously uh, in terms of cost, it, it was um, uh, Minister of Health is paying a lot of cost to deliver vaccine to the facilities. Now it is integrated with the existing system of the service central store. So uh, in terms of delivery, in terms of information system, in, uh, in terms of all level, uh, it is one of the best practice. So we can say it is one of the best practice, yeah. Yeah, and I, I think one of the important things about this, it, it really comes down to making sure everybody, that everybody's objectives are aligned. You know, 
how do, the, question, the second part of the question is how does the system address pushbacks from some government stakeholders that benefit from the parallel supply chain? So, you know, you need to make sure everybody is, has the same objective in terms of um, back, ensuring that vaccines are available as are other health products, um, improved um, product availability, um, reduction in cost, um, efficiency and how you measure efficiency in terms of lead times and product turnovers and lack of waste. And so I think all of these things, building that um, agreement and alignment objectives is a very important first step to, before you start this process. The next question was, what is an EPSA hub? I think that's a pretty um, straightforward question. Uh, Hanoki, what is an EPSA hub? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it is a central uh, store because in most of the African countries, I think uh, it's called a central store. So in our scenario, it, uh, we call the Ethiopian Pharmaceutical Supply Agency, and it is responsible to deliver and to manage the vaccine and all other commodities. So right, that is, and I think yeah. you said the halves are yeah, the halves are also at uh, zonal or at district level they yeah. have a branch. So there, so, yeah. there are branches of the of the EPSA that are yeah. located throughout the country. And so yes. um, the next question, what would you advise as much as is integration concerned at the lower level? Okay, advice for integration at the at the lowest level. And I think actually the lowest meaning health facilities and health centers you know, integration at those lowest levels makes the most sense to me. That's a, the area, the level where um, you have fewer personnel and those personnel are usually all responsible for everything that's happening. And so um, it, we've seen, you know, we mentioned that one of the easy, one of the easiest aspects of integration is in the, in the storage of the products and in the cold chain. There are, a number of cold chain products that can be stored together at the facility level. Um, and if you're using, you know, with your LMIS, depending if it's a paper-based LMIS or not, it may be, and your reporting system, it may be that it's easier since there's only possibly one or two or three people who are working at a facility to complete one LMIS forms. What advice would you have for, um, for the lowest level integration? Yeah, uh, the lowest uh, level, I think, also we have limited infrastructure because usually we have one refrigerator. So mm -hmm. we are forcefully, we have to integrate it because we don't have a fancy resource to mm -hmm. store vaccine and other commodities separately. So usually uh, we store together because we have around 20,000 health posts in 4,000 health facilities. So if you are doubling uh, those infrastructures, it will be a headache for the government. And this is one of the area. The other one is also delivery. So if trucks are coming, EPI truck is coming today and other commodity truck is tomorrow. So also we don't have a fancy resource for that. So transport uh, integration is also one of the area. Uh, and uh, previously, they are going and collecting vac vaccine. EPI people are going and uh, collecting vaccine. So mm -hmm. 4,000 uh, facilities, some of them they are renting, some of them they are using ambulances. So integration is also a relief for them because vaccine is directly delivered to the facilities in, with other commodities. So this is also the area. The other one is a lemma, it is also human resources and the other. So these are some of an examples. Mm -hmm. um, the fourth question is how to support government in overcoming the fear of integration. You know, uh, so many of these factors of integration really come down to the human element, you know, the, what are people's objectives and motives and agenda. And I think to help a government um, think about integration, it's always useful to have a an example that's been successful and and that there and the sharing of lessons learned from another country to help um, with one government seeing how it could be it has been successful in, a, in another country and how they've measured that success or how they have dealt with their challenges and um, overcome those challenges 
Um, any anything to add, Hanuk, about how to how to support a government in overcoming their fear of immigration? Uh, the government uh, also in the presentation, uh, I give some example. When we started, two out of three hubs they started quickly because they buy in this idea because there needs to be their support. Without their support, uh, we cannot go ahead. So uh, one of the regional areas bureau was lagging behind because of due to reasons. Uh, they thought that the leaders taught us they will lose their job and they are not believing in uh, the uh, coming force or the Ethiopian Pharmaceutical Supply Agency on due to different results, uh, reasons. They are not transferring or integrating vaccine to other commodities. But um, we have national review meetings. In the national review meetings, uh, they are presenting and they are taking a lesson uh, one region from another and also this is a platform of competition. So based on that, uh, now every region or so district is integrated vaccine. So uh, it has a government support. That's why from uh, districts now they are pushing us to go to health facilities. Mm -hmm. And we started to around 800 health facilities out of 4,000 4, health facilities. So, uh, they are pushing uh, Ethiopian Pharmaceutical Supply Agency to deliver vaccine to all health facilities. So there is a government uh, also uh, buy-in. Also, government is also supporting Great. these activities. Yeah. Thank you. Uh, I'm going to I'm going to stop the questions there. And and DDA, I think you see you have a question. I'm going to ask us to discuss that on the boost um, sub, uh, platform. I am before we stop our webinar today. I want to um, make sure that everybody who is attending this webinar um, is, is knows about the Boost community platform, which has just been recently launched. Boost is, a, is an online community to where immunization professionals can have a chance to connect with each other, to learn, and to also um, lead, including providing, um, building leadership skills, as well as providing a place for dis discussion and leadership. So if you have not already joined the Boost community, you will see that there is a um, link here to register to become a member of Boost, the specific community for immunization professionals. Um, I will include that link in my follow-up email to you all. I really encourage you to, to join and participate in this community and network and learn from each other. Um, in addition, um, just want to highlight the learning groups that are associated with the community. These include um, learning a couple of different um, kinds of learning groups. There's, there are special topic groups, there are alumni, as well as um, as particular specific training courses that are happening through the learning groups on the Boost site. And these are free and open to the, to the membership. Um, I would point out that we have started an immunization supply chain learning group on the Boost site that um, I encourage you to, to join and join in the discussion in the immunization supply chain learning group. Um, and you will be seeing us active there in leading discussions and particularly following up on our webinars and other activities as we go forward. I would like to remind you all that we will, that you'll be receiving that follow-up email with additional resources for the things that we use to create this particular webinar. Also a link to our game, which only has two more months left to play, where there'll be prizes for the highest score in the game. And you'll also receive um, an evaluation form for this webinar. We hope that you will be able to participate in our last webinar of this, of this series, Cold Gene Equipment Management, which will take place on Tuesday, March 10th at 1300 GMT. And I will send that um, registration link for that particular webinar in the follow-up email, and it will be advertised as well on the Boost platform. Many thanks for joining us today, and a very special thanks to our um, colleague, Hanuk, for giving us so much great information about the Ethiopia experience. Best to Thank all. You. Thank you. Thank you, Barbara. Thank you. All right. Thank you, everybody. Goodbye, Bye. everybody.
thank you. Bye.